Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Sewing Diaries. First off, I just want to say a big thank you for all the encouragement, tips, and insights you guys showed for episode 1. I made that video hoping that it could help someone who was getting into sewing just like me, but it ended up receiving a ton of support from both new and seasoned sewists alike. People from my own generation and even more so from those of the previous generations. So I've been feeling very supported and connected in real life and here online from across the generations and I am in very high spirits to go forth on this sewing journey. So again, I just want to say a deep heartfelt thank you. These flowers are for you guys. In this episode, I am tackling another three beginner friendly projects, which totals out to just about 15 hours of silence for me and my own thoughts. I thought a lot about my attitude and mindset that I want to nourish towards this learning process, so I'll be sharing a little bit of that today. Let's get into it. I had been eyeing up this canvas bag tutorial for months now, before I finally bit the bullet and committed to learning how to sew. Besides the fact that I probably spent an hour cutting out the pattern alone, and another 5-6 to six hours powering through the sewing, this project was pretty much smooth sailing. Between the canvas and the lining, this bag required 10 pieces of fabric, which was a slight upgrade from the 4 pieces that the simple tote bag required. So I started out by planning my pattern in my notebook to make sure I could fit all my pieces onto the fabric, then I drew the pattern out on some paper cut it out and attempted to pin the pattern onto the fabric as a template. But when I went to cut out the fabric itself, the edges kept coming out wonky despite using a paper pattern. So I changed my approach and used the edges of the pattern like rulers instead and marked out onto the fabric. Had the patterns had curved edges, then I think the pinning would have been necessary, but all these pieces were rectangular with straight edges, so this was the easier way to go about it. After the hour I spent cutting the fabric meticulously, I realized I had a perfectionistic tendency to want to draw and cut out perfect pieces of fabric that lined up perfectly with the grain. They had to be cut out just the right length down to the last millimeter. And I feel like a part of me believed that if I cut my fabric crooked or any other way, then once I got to the sewing part and my edges didn't line up, then all hell would break loose. And while my fabric edges still didn't match up even though I tried really hard to cut them nicely, it's safe to say that hell did not break loose. I was just in my head a little too much and if I could get out of it a bit, loosen up, work with and not against the little discrepancies here and there as they come, then the sewing process could become much more of an enjoyable experience. This was my first time trying to sew curved edges and I'd say they came out pretty nice. This extra reinforcement as well. Pretty proud of this one, might I add. Anyways, pretty much smooth sailing, no complaints here. You might have already caught a glimpse of this from episode 1. I found this really cute fabric and at first it was destined to become a pair of shorts. But the pattern was way too adorable to only be seen on a pair of shorts worn on me once or twice a week, so the fabric received a destiny review and changed to become a pillowcase to maximize visibility per square adorability. Is that a word? Anyways, I saw this video of Makara Tours on YouTube where she was literally measuring the pattern for her prom dresses with her own body silhouette, much less with a ruler, and her garments still come out looking amazing. like. Are you guys seeing this? I mean, the ability to measure with your eyes and work with what you got, regardless of equipment. This. This is something I aspire towards, and it motivated me to challenge my perfectionistic tendencies even more. How I understand perfectionism is holding yourself to very high standards and not stopping until you reach your best but also becoming a very nasty version of yourself towards yourself when things don't come out perfect, even things beyond your scope of control. To me, dropping perfectionism doesn't mean I'll lower my standards of what I work on, but more so learning to be more flexible during the process and acknowledging to myself the hard work I've put into something when the product comes out well or doesn't come out well, 
knowing that I gave it my all. But then again, isn't there a fine line between doing your best and doing good enough? Like if I really gave it my absolute all to the max and sacrificed everything else in life, then yes, I guess I could make an even better pillowcase. But then where's the fine line? At the end of the day, I think that mindset is important. I'm going to make mistakes, that's inevitable. And I could either make a mistake and then chastise myself over it, still learn from the mistake but feel bad about it, or I could make a mistake, skip the chastising, get straight to the learning and feel assured that I had learned something new today and that I could troubleshoot it again if it ever came up. Kind of like how you would talk to your best friend. If your best friend gave it her all, regardless of the end product, you'd still find ways to acknowledge what she did well, give her some encouragement, and view her mishaps with a more gentle heart. You wouldn't verbally bash and nitpick her, right? Yet strangely enough, we'd often automatically do that to ourselves. I knew that if I held on to the fear of cutting fabric crooked, then the tendency could grow and become crippling once I started tackling more complicated projects that had more pieces to work with, pieces with curved edges and irregular shapes. So now, instead of aiming for perfect, I want to focus more on giving the project at hand a solid effort, making sure that each garment I make has integrity in its construction so that it looks good and functions well, and also make room to make mistakes and learn from them. This was my attempt at a faux overlock and I first did it with a zigzag stitch, but it didn't look right and I went online, looked at a tutorial and realized I actually had to change the presser foot. Um, there was a designated presser foot that came with my sewing machine to do faux overlock. So I did that, turned the dial to the right setting and here we have it, nice faux overlock meaning I can throw the pillowcases into the wash and not worry about all the stray strands unraveling and coming apart. Hello party people, I have come back from the dead. I took a shower, washed my hair, and I feel almost like a brand new person. Today, I am tackling my first wearable garment, the pajama bottoms. Even if I make mistakes, they were gonna be worn at home, so there was no need to fret. A very forgiving project. Or so I thought. First order of business. In an effort to become more flexible as a sewist, instead of using a printable pattern, I decided to use an existing pair of pants and make adjustments based on its silhouette instead. First, I made sure to stretch out the waistband while marking out the fabric so that the pants would actually fit over my hip and not end up as thigh stockings. The tutorial said I should give myself an extra 3 inches from the waistband for seam allowance and to make the waistband itself, but I, with my flexibility mindset, was feeling adventurous, so I gave myself a whole whopping four inches to work with. By the end of hour three, I had already finished most of the pants construction. I had sewn up the crotch, faux overlocked my seams, and the only thing left was the waistband, and I would have a new addition to my wardrobe. At this point, I was pretty confident that I could finish this project in four hours, right? Wrong. Here were all my trials with the waistband. Round one. I made the casing for my elastic, but it was too narrow, so halfway through, my elastic scrunched up. So I undid the entire thing. Round two. The casing was wide enough this time, and the elastic made it the entire way through. So I sighed a sigh of relief and sewed everything back up. And then I realized that the elastic had flipped halfway through. Well then, rip me. I was debating how I wanted to go about feeling the discomfort of a flipped elastic rubbing against my skin, and decided I'd rather not. So I ripped the seams back up and flipped the elastic. Round 3. 
As I was straightening out the waistband, I decided to skip safety pinning the free end of the elastic to the pants, so needless to say, I lost the elastic band in the casing. So I pulled it all back out, pinned down the ends, and re-threaded the elastic. Round 4 By now, I was sure the pants were done and I tried them on. But alas, I had cut the elastic a little too long and the pants were a little too loose on me. Note to self to try out the elastic before you actually sew it down. Anyways, you guys know the drill. Seam rip, cut elastic, re -sew. At rounds 1 and 2, I was a little confused as to why I was making such seemingly basic mistakes. But by the time rounds 3 and 4 rolled around, it had gotten kind of amusing. As if life knew about all the ways that a simple elastic waistband could go wrong and made the active decision to throw them all at me all at once. The good news was, I had learned to troubleshoot from each of those trials and I haven't repeated them since. But all of this also made me aware that I was much more patient now than I used to be. Only a year ago, something like this would have driven me up the wall. My tolerance has gotten better, and by that, I don't mean I hold in my anger better, but more so I don't get angry over the things that used to irritate me anymore. My anger is never about someone else, it's usually about me and my perception of my own self-worth, or more accurately, the lack thereof. Again, it ties back to my former perfectionistic tendencies. But even if I learned to release my anger as it arises but never fixed the way I viewed myself, which is the root cause of said anger in the first place, then the same things would trigger me over and over again. Essentially, I guess you grow out of certain triggers when you realize the emotional pattern a certain stimulus took to get you triggered in the first place. And then you replace that pattern with something more constructive, usually rooted in the way you view yourself, and slowly the things that trigger you don't anymore. Sometimes the best thing you can do is to remove yourself from the trigger. Other times the best thing you could do is grow beyond that trigger, and even if the stimulus does resurface in your life, it will no longer have power over you. These days, when something gets hard or goes wrong, the first thing I do when I start to feel those emotions bubbling up is to laugh, audibly, out loud and it immediately disperses the tension that could have grown into anger or guilt or self-doubt. And with this extra mental clarity that I now have, I can focus that towards creating better, more constructive thought patterns. As of right now, I see the process of making mistakes and learning as growth. Who would have thought an elastic waistband could initiate such an inner monologue? What sorts of things do you guys ponder when you sew? How do you guys navigate projects that don't go as planned? Let me know in the comments down below. All the things I made in episode 2 are being well loved and well used, so I'm excited to revisit these projects again in the future. Will they still take me 5-6 to six hours per garment? Only time will tell. Also, my family has started requesting pajama bottoms and dresses, so I gotta hop on that real quick. Anyways, thank you so much for being here, and thank you again for all the support and encouragement. If you have any other tips or advice, please please share them down below and we can all learn from them. I hope you guys have a lovely week, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye!